Veronica Alvarez. Welcome to our very first Yoga X alumni interview. We are so grateful to have you here with us and to continue being a part of our ever-growing community. Veronica was a part of our very first Yoga X 200-hour teacher training cohort back in 2019. She is an OG Yoga X alumni, and we're very excited to hear her story, her background, and how Yoga X has played a role into her life. So, Without further ado, let's get into it. How are you doing today, Veronica? Excited to be here, uh, as well as an honor to share this space with you, Aubrey. Great. Uh, we are so excited to have you here and wanted to start off by telling us a little bit about your story, who you are, um, and how yoga has played a role into that. So I'm probably going to provide a long answer to that question. Um, <laughs> I'm Veronica, um, born and raised in San Jose. Um, I'm 42. I'm mother, daughter, sister, community member, partner, um, among all roles. And I also serve my community. I'm a wellness educator. So I um, graduated with a master's in social work and um, got my licensing. And um, I have a passion to help people um, adopt self-care strategies, uh, improve health, um, be more conscientious and aware of what they put in their bodies and how it makes them feel, um, develop self-love and compassion as well. Um, so I moved from a mental health therapy um, profession to a more caring and wellness, health and wellness profession. And I absolutely enjoy it. I've been doing that for almost 10 years now. We need more of you in this world. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Of course. Um, um, to add on to that, I'm sorry. Um, I, I was working with the East Palo Alto community um, at risk, uh, low income, and um, experienced multiple trauma experiences in their lives. So um, with this population, they were seeking training, um, employment training, um, post-incarceration, or just um, a life change, right? And um, they had difficulty concentrating in, in their studies, in their work. So my role was to support them in managing whatever stress or challenge was coming up in their training program and um, support them along the way until completion of training. Goodness, that is so wonderful to hear. You have picked a lot of different routes. And so I'm curious to know, like you, have any of these compelled you to go into yoga in a way and to start practicing um, into this journey of yours? Oh, for sure. Um, I developed an interest in yoga back in um, 2011. It was just a personal curiosity of mine where um, I wanted to learn more about it. I mean, I was taking intense classes like cardio kickboxing and, and boxing, but um, I wanted something more relaxing and soothing. Mm -hmm. And um, in my experience with yoga, um, it wasn't something that made me feel good because I would go to a studio that was very um, competitive and aimed at perfection and um, having the right poses. Um, yeah. It was a large group of um, individuals in that setting. So um, I kind of took a pause for some time. And um, I think what reopened that interest in yoga was um, burning out from my mental health profession and just seeking some self-care, compassion and finding myself. And um, I booked a yoga retreat in Hawaii and that was a life-changing moment for me where I wanted to go back to it and seek a different type of style of yoga. I agree. I think oh, many individuals realize that the intense heart classes are not what they are initially going into yoga for. It's more of the mental health aspect. And that is Yoga X's mission is to, <laughs> to bring that into different settings. Um, what compelled you to become a yoga teacher? It's a great question. Uh, I remember taking a couple of trainings offered by Heather and Chris, 
um, the very first trainings offered by Yoga X, one of them being um, yoga for mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. I was absolutely fascinated with the information that was shared um, about yoga and the science behind it. Um, I was also captivated by the koshas, the kosha model, and I just wanted to learn more and explore further. So any training that was offered by Heather and Chris, I would jump on it. And I was excited to hear that they were going to offer the first 200 hour training. And I think what made me feel, um, I guess, eligible, because sometimes you don't feel capable of being in the training, a teacher training, especially, um, they provided this nurturing and inclusive environment for everybody. And it wasn't um, about um, becoming a, a seasoned teacher, but it was more a step-by-step -step process. And once they were talking about this yoga training and how they were very supportive of people, all people who were interested in it, I think I felt compelled to, to participate. Um, and I was <laughs> expecting my son in that process. And that wasn't a limitation. I did talk to them um, about it. And they said, nope, come we, we receive you, we're open, we're not going to close our doors, and we highly encourage you. It's still possible for you to take the training. Oh so, my goodness. Yes. I love that. I had no idea that um, you were going to be pregnant during this, and, and that is just a really amazing story to hear, that you could do this, and there's no limitations, really. It's just up to you, and everyone is welcomed. For sure. I mean, I had a big belly at that time when we were in person for the first <laughs> and that didn't hold me back. That was, that was a wonderful experience. I'm so glad to hear that. Could you tell us a little bit more about your 200 hour teacher training journey and what it entailed um, since you were the first cohort and um, this was pre pandemic. <laughs> and so it looks a little bit different now, but just wanted to get your take on on your on the program and how it kind of impacted your life. Well, it was um, something I never expected. Um, it was intense and beautiful at the same time. It was in person in um, a beautiful Ojai setting. Um, when we received the binder, uh, uh, with the information that we were going to review, I, that was intimidating <laughs> to look at with the times uh, that, that were dedicated to a certain topic. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm back in, in college. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think what facilitated that um, overload of information was um, how we would go into uh, the discussion piece and then practicing the yoga as the balance, right? So um, it wasn't like you have to learn this information, but um, we eased into that process um, and it was overwhelming, but at the same time, it was valuable information that continues to stay with me till this day, right? Um, it was also an emotional process um, aside from intellectual because um, it was a small group of 12 of us um, in an intimate setting. So there were moments where there was a lot of vulnerability. Um, a lot of emotions were shared in that safe space. Um, and I think that that was wonderful that we were able to um, pour ourselves <laughs> and not be judged or criticized, but um, validated and held comforted in that process. So it was a um, a training, but it was also um, a wisdom experience of sharing um, and growing, growing together as a group. Yes, I, I am also in the current 200 hour teacher training program right now. And that is something that I am learning is I've gotten to be so close to people throughout this training because of the vulnerability and the different ways that we get to share and how our practice is set up um, week by week and with the small groups, things like that. It's a different experience that I don't know if other teacher training programs have because our, our program is so long, it's extended um, and it's not super fast paced. Um, and so that is something that I appreciate as well uh, with, with it. 
Yeah. Um, and I feel that if we don't get the information right away, that's okay. There's like this um, kindness and, and um, forgiveness piece, right? That we don't really get in other environments or I don't really see much. It's just, it's delivered. There it is. Like, take it. <laughs> yes. <Press. laughs> um, yes. But my experience was definitely more nurturing. And um, I loved the community aspect. I mean, we would eat meals together. We would share things outside of yoga, our personal experiences, our family experiences, our work. So that that was amazing to increase that type of bonding in the group. Yeah. Out of your journey um, during the 200 hour program, was there a pivotal moment or memory, maybe experience that you had as a student teacher that you would be willing to share with us? For sure. I think I always mention it because it was um, life-changing for me. It happened um, after my 200 hour training. Um, so I had my son during my the pandemic, and then we moved to our second portion of the training um, remote. I think that that kind of affected me because I'm a, a lot about connection in person and hugging. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but to make a long story short, um, I started to develop um, physical symptoms of illness like um, early 2021, like just um, discomfort and with certain yoga poses, I would feel really uncomfortable. And um, I was later diagnosed in 2021 with um, stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, now that was not only traumatic, but life-changing because um, I was at risk of like, if not, if I hadn't started um, chemo right away, I, my heart would be compromised. So I was like, just rushed into this process of immediate crisis intervention and my journey consisted of monthly hospitalizations treatments interventions to um alleviate fluid that was built up around my my heart so um I had moments of deep depression I had moments of um questioning um like life and in general um these treatments took basically my life force, depleted me completely emotionally, mentally, um, spiritually. But I always um, remembered Chris's voice and Heather's voice in these trainings about um, take yoga with you. Um, every day, it's a lifestyle. Like um, always remember you have your breath accessible, right? And um, during the very most challenging moments, I always came back to those reminders of using my breath, um, being kind and compassionate, um, the limbs of yoga, the, the, the purpose and, um, ethical living, right. The, the non-harming. Um, so during my treatments, even though I, I was depleted, I would take at least five minutes to check in or five minutes to do a pose. And I gradually would build up until I um, developed enough stamina to do a 20 to 30 minute practice. So I would go back to my notes where I would teach yoga sessions <laughs> during my trainings. And I think that that was um, what gave me life again, because yoga is everything um, and everywhere. It's not only the physical body, but it's your external environment. and um, Thankfully, I'm in a better place now where my health is stable and um, I continue to practice yoga as um, not only for my, my health and maintenance, but also um, to have meaning and purpose and to coach others into the importance of yoga as a lifestyle. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I am very glad to hear that your health is stable and that you're doing a lot better but it warms my heart to know that you had Chris and Heather's voice in the back of your head the entire um, journey that you were you were going through and that yoga like you mentioned isn't just a practice it's a lifestyle and that you can really take it with you anywhere and you're the prime example of that 
for sure. You said that you were a mental uh, mental health educator currently. Um, have you applied any of your learnings from Yoga X throughout your professional life and work um, and maybe what that looks like? Sure. So um, right now I work with my team. I'm the wellness representative with my team in the early life stress uh, in the Department of Psychiatry at Stanford. And um, there's different knowledge in our my team where there's like neuroscience focus, there's um, trauma focus, right? But um, every Monday meeting, I always carve out time for a wellness practice. And the wellness practice entails um, yoga philosophy. So I always um, intersect yoga with um, neuroscience. And um, my team is very receptive to um, the practices that we do, whether it's a mindfulness meditation, a gratitude um, reflection, or um, this past meeting, we did chair yoga <laughs> poses, which they really enjoyed. So that's one part of how I apply it professionally within my team. And another aspect is in, in my work. So um, I currently serve um, representatives from organizations who are looking for um, developing wellness and what it looks like for their organization. So I share um, the concepts that I've learned, um, the importance of recognizing the different layers of the physical self and um, how they influence relationship because these organizations want to increase connection. So I always um, focus on the physical and mental layer to introduce them to wellness practice and um, value the importance of the mind-body connection. Um, other than that, previously, I provided workshops on movement, so mindful movement um, with using specific language tailored um, where it's not um, just do this pose, but I always like uh, remember Heather saying, um, offer alternatives and always modifications, especially for those people who are not able to do um, challenging poses. So um, any mindful movement was offered during student workshops in my previous um, uh, work with community organizations. Um, and specifically staff, students, and um, administrators were the participants. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's amazing to hear how you've used this teacher training in a plethora of ways and not just through a physical practice. Like you mentioned, the mindfulness, the meditation, and the beginning of the meetings, um, all of that makes a difference. And just acknowledging that this is yoga, even though it might not be typically what we're used to, um, or what other people may think yoga is, because it's not a physical practice. Um, but I, I do think that it's very important that you're sharing this. Yeah, and um, I'm really excited. We were recently um, selected to be part of um, presenting at an ACAP conference for psychiatrists in the fall. So my two of my colleagues and myself will be um, facilitating a yoga X centered practice on um, uh, increasing insight and awareness. And I'm going to be focusing on the mental layer, one of my colleagues on the physical and another one on the um, wisdom layer. So we're really excited to be <laughs> part of this process and assisting psychiatrists in self-care strategies for their own wellness. That is amazing. We, I would love to find out a little bit more information on that maybe later and um, see if Yoga X can help in any way um, to get the word out about that or just what it might entail because that is a very important part and that is our main target audience. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really happy to hear that you're doing all this amazing work and um, like I mentioned, we need more people like you in this world. Thank you so much. Is there anything else I can answer or share for you? I do have one final question for you. As What is one piece of advice you would like to give someone who is currently embarking or maybe 
thinking about in the future embarking on the yoga X uh, yoga teacher training program. So I would say um, to any individual to first of all, be open um, to open curiosity as well, because sometimes we go walking in with expectations and desired outcomes. And I would say, <laughs> let go of all of that. And uh, a willingness to surrender as this is a transformational journey and um, surrendering at all levels where it could be emotional, it could be physical, right? And um, okay. it's definitely a journey to learn more about yourself and what you're capable of. And I think we're capable of a lot of things <laughs> that, that sometimes we don't believe enough in ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes. I will take that advice as I continue going through the journey myself. Um, but uh, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us and to share your story and um, for Yoga X to be a big pivotal part in your journey. And um, I just loved hearing about how you are continuing to use it in your everyday practice and your professional life and sharing it with others. So truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, Veronica. Thank you.